Hi again, I'm Carson from Guys With Games. Today we are going to look at my adaptation of an old logic-based game from my childhood called Mastermind. Mastermind, if you don't remember it or you don't know it at all, I guess it was a board game. It was, it, you had this long plastic, kind of like a cribbage style board with holes in it, and then a bunch of different colored pegs that you could use to play the game. If I remember correctly, it was a two-player game. One of those players would be a mastermind who came up with a code using not letters or numbers, but these colors, which, and they could repeat too. You don't need to use all five different colors. And the other person would use this space to kind of guess and logically deduce the mastermind's secret password. So the way we're going to do this in our class is that you, the teacher, are going to be the mastermind and come up with your own secret code. You know, you won't write it on the whiteboard. I've done that so that we don't get lost. But this would be in your lesson plan, or if you just want to try to remember it, write it down. Write it down in your lesson plan. And the students need to try to guess this using the color markers or chalk that you have at your disposal. And I'm going to separate them into two teams, and they're going to play two guys at a time. And so, again, this is kind of like a logical deduction game. There's some inherent educational properties to it, but I want to add an additional element where they have to do an English task. So this game can work online or in person. I've been playing it online all week. But you need a way to choose which student of you know, one and one will do the English task. So if I'm online and I say, okay, student number one, student number two, open your microphone, please. And let's see, I flip the, it's tails. So whatever my English task is, maybe it's make a sentence using a certain vocabulary word or make a sentence using a certain tense, whatever you're studying. Or just ask one of the QA questions that we learn every week and the, the rest of the students will answer that. But I flipped to tail, so student two, can you ask the class a question? Okay, once they've done that, the winner of the heads and tails can take the first guess. So what are they trying to do? Well, if you haven't just figured it out already, this is, my, this is my secret password. Blue, red, blue, green, green. And I, I'm gonna strongly suggest, whether you're playing in person or online, that you don't just draw the color like I could just make a dot, you know, black dot, orange, orange, green, and blue. But you're going to find that that wastes a lot of time. First of all, you might have a student dealing with color blindness. It's just a normal thing. It's not normally that big of a hindrance. It would be, though, if you did it this way. Secondly, some people are playing on smaller screens than others. Some people's screen, you know, quality is worse than others. Write the letter so it's easy to distinguish. K is black, B is blue, R is red, O is orange, G is green. That way they don't have to distinguish between these two things. So let's say student number one understands how to play the game. I know I'm rushing through the explanation, but they'll guess by saying uh, black. Okay, I write it. Orange, orange, orange again, green, and uh, blue. So I write it down. That's their guess. Now this is information building stage. You know, they could get lucky and guess it right at the beginning, but that seems highly unlikely. So I need to give them information based on their guesses, and then the, the subsequent players build on the information that they gain from each guess. So it's kind of like a teamwork game, but it's a race to see which team can, can, can come up with the right information first. So how do I give them any information? Remember, my real answer is blue, red, blue, green, green. So I have these two indicators, a circle and a triangle, and the students need to know what these mean before we do anything. A circle, if they get any circles, it means that they have somewhere in their answer the right color in the right position. I use the word place because it's easy, they already know this position. I would need to explain a little bit, but it's, so we have one of those. If you compare the green here, it's the right color at, compared to mine, and it's in the right position. And we also have one of these where we have uh, a color which is in my real answer, but it's not in position number five. It would be one or three. And so these three, they're not in my, in my answer at all. Now, they wouldn't be able to deduce that just on this information. They would be able to know that 
only one or two of these colors are in the real answer. So maybe the second person, if the second person were like logically flawless, they would, they would probably guess some red in here and just to see how many red are there. <clears throat> they, and they can guess whatever they want. Maybe he says red, 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 red. So what would we, the teacher, write for this guess? Five, four, three, two, one. Any guesses? We give them one circle because there is only one red in our real answer. And it's here. So obviously they guessed it in every position. They, you can show them that they have, so you could even say, look, there's only one red. It's somewhere, you got it right, okay? So then, okay, student number three and four, flip the coin. That person do the English task, and the other guy gets to go first. Maybe she says green, green, red, blue, green. All right, what do we give them? We're always gonna start with the, the best information possible. So I wouldn't look at these two and say, oh, that's two triangles, because they actually have a green in the right spot. So we're going to say that they have one circle and three triangles. So this is the circle. They don't know which one is the circle, but I do. This one is the circle. The blue and the red are in my answer, but they need to be in another place. And then one of the greens needs to change too. So those are the three triangles and they still only have four, so they're missing something. They, they haven't found which color, or maybe they would know. Maybe they would think that, uh, oh, there must, yeah, they would know this. So they would know for sure that there has to be a blue here. Two of these colors are in it, and it's obviously green and blue by comparing this information. There's one red, and there's not three green, so they would know that I mean, if they were logically perfect, they would know that there are two blues, two greens, and a red, just by these guesses. They won't be. They're going to make silly mistakes. So you will get a student who guesses all five colors still, and that's fine. If you want to explain why that's not true, especially after it goes on and on, if someone is still guessing five colors here, let them fail, but explain to them why, look, there, there can't be five colors in the answer. So even in the first guess, they should know that there are not five colors in the answer. Anyway, you keep going until somebody gets it correctly. That team wins all the stars. And that's how you play Mastermind in the classroom. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.